Hi. Hi, Dylan. Nice to meet you. Um, nice to thank meet you. you too. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me today. I really appreciate it. And congrats on uh, Leroy, Texas. I had a lot of fun with that one. I saw it at Tribeca last year. And uh, yeah, it was one I um, I reviewed and I was, I was very fond of. So congratulations. I, uh, I, I was working. Uh, I remember when Shane told me that they were going to be, I was so excited because I've never even seen a film of mine at, at Tribeca. So I was like, oh. finally, but I was working <laughs> and I couldn't come, but. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, there's the next one. Um, you know, speaking of working, you've done a lot. Um, I think you have like your credits on IMDb or I don't know, like <laughs> over 140 or 150 or something like that. Um, so you, you've definitely had a lot of roles. And I'm just wondering if there is something in particular when you're reading a script that you look for when kind of choosing a character that you want to play. Well, it's funny, uh, there was something about Leroy, Texas that I loved. And that was that I love playing a guy that you think is going to be one way and then all of a sudden becomes something else. Uh, the opening scene of the film, I read that and just went, OK, I love this film. Uh, and it was really fun to play, uh, uh, even though it was late at night in Albuquerque. <laughs> And it was cold and and uh, the two of us were stuck in this car for hours, but it was a, a total gas. Um, but I think I think for me, yeah, when I look at films, it's like that kind of thing. It's like trying to lead the audience to think it's going to be one thing and then taking them a whole different way. And I also loved how uh, this film gave me a chance to explore that side of myself that was just a business guy who had a terrible awful business but that he had a <laughs> singular vision in terms of how to accomplish that it's a good way to look at it um and i know i noticed that you do play i mean you play some bad guys sometimes uh, <laughs> is there it something is, it has <laughs> happened yes <laughs> is there something especially fun or challenging about that for you that you are drawn to I think I think the uh, early on I I kind of found out uh, when I was starting uh, and somebody gave me a role like that that it was not about uh, embracing the evilness of it and twirling the mustache but instead it was more about what is it that this guy thinks he's accomplishing that's that's good for if not the world, it's good for him. It's good for the people he cares about. And so, you know, you it, it's the, the worst when you come to the worst of the worst. It's like, what is Hitler doing to be do something positive for himself and for his country? You know, so that you I, I think that's what you've got to do. I I uh, played a Nazi and it's like, what is it about this guy? What is it about even this guy who is trying to do something positive? So I think that's how I look at bad guys is, as I, I often say, they're just misunderstood. <laughs> do you often just out of curiosity when you're doing like preparing for the role, do you invent a little bit of that for yourself? Like do you give the little backstory that isn't in the script just to kind of get into character? I think you have to, and yeah. I definitely did on Leroy, Texas, because there's there's so little about this guy that you know. Uh, it just there's you don't there is no backstory, so right. you have to kind of really come up with something. I think, uh, and that's what I tried to do was to try and make him a a real human being and where he came from, where he's going to, and why he's why he's in this little town and and why he does what he does i mean is he uh i had a whole thing going on that you know nobody will ever know about when i'm dying in that car that's what i'm thinking about it <laughs> well i actually the character um kind of kind of steals the movie in, in some sense um it's a great character and you, you play it wonderfully i'd love to see a, a film going back and <laughs> learning more about that character <laughs> backstory so don't throw away those notes yeah <laughs> right, know, maybe, right. <laughs> maybe that maybe that could still come um so in a lot of your roles you also are, are very funny you, you do seem to you know gravitate towards also like dark comedies um is that also something that you're really drawn to or that is important to you when you're especially when you're doing like a darker role uh to have that levity well, I tell you, you know, I've, I've been very lucky to work with some, you know, very funny people. 
and John Magaro and Steve Zahn are certainly on that list of, of top, top. Uh, I, I watch what they do in this film and it's hilarious. It's hilarious watching these guys and the supporting cast, the characters and everything are, are just fantastic. I think Shane got so much great comedy out of it, but yes, I aspire to that. And I've, I've worked with, you know, a lot of great comedians like Steve Martin and John Candy and Nathan Lane, uh, really, really funny people. So I, I basically steal everything I can. Yes. <laughs> Um, so I know that you also had, uh, you have a directing credit. Is that something that you aim to do more in the future? Uh, I would love to. Uh, I think uh, it, it only really happened because uh, I was very lucky. Uh, Tony Hoover, my fellow producer on the film and also the, the writer of 23 Blast, the film that I directed, uh, she came to me and said, well, do you want to direct it? When she had lost her first choice of director. And uh, that hasn't happened again. But uh, I think the film turned out really well. We did it on a shoestring down in Kentucky. And, uh, and I'm very proud of the film, especially uh, the one performance, I think, who's really good, who's Becky Ann Baker, uh, my <laughs> wife, who's yeah. fantastic in it. And really, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a, the whole cast is great. Uh, so I had a lot of fun doing that and I'd love to do it again, sure. Yeah, and so what was that like? I know that's a different film, but collaborating with your wife, is that something that you uh, also aim to do more? Because I'm sure yeah. that was a blast. She's also very fun. Oh yeah, she's she's really fun. Uh, we have we have luckily been able to do quite a bit of that actually over the years, and uh, uh, it's always fun either on a play or on a film or TV. Uh, we uh, there was a show called when I played the Nazi Hunters, and uh, all of a sudden, episode four or five. Becky Ann Baker is there playing the uh, commerce secretary for Jimmy Carter. And we had these scenes where we are just fighting each other right and left. We had so much fun and we were able to run those lines in the car, you know, run, driving back and forth to places. We'd be running those lines and she had some, she had one line what was it? You small, bald son of a bitch. And she she would practice that line a lot. In fact, I asked her one day, I said, you're still practicing. We did that scene six months ago. Why are you still practicing that line? Right. That one just comes up randomly sometimes. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> she, she just wants to relive the role. You know, there's yeah. nothing else to it. Yeah, she, she, <laughs> she just wants to be sure I don't forget that. Right. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so tell you, tell me a little bit more about the collaboration on this project. Did you also work with the director at all to kind of make this character a little bit, um, you know, as far as from what it was originally in the script, what we see on screen? Oh, definitely. I, I, you know, I think Shane, he obviously doesn't have a whole lot of experience, but I thought he did a great job. He knew what he wanted in each scene. It was all very carefully blocked out and whatnot. And uh, I, I enjoyed working with him. I, uh, he gave me a lot of le uh, uh, ground, you know, leeway, uh, but at the same time, he also knew what he wanted. And if I was ever headed in some direction, he was very quick to say, you know, let's get back to this or that. Um, but we both liked the no nonsense, get the job done-ness of this guy. Uh, and, uh, I mean, there, there, there's a scene in the diner that I just love with the waitress who is, uh, uh, she was just wonderful. And, and, uh, the chance to kind of do a scene like that, where, uh, it, 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 it has nothing to do with the film at all. It just right. is a human or interaction. And I think over the years, he's lost a little bit of the sense of, oh, this isn't appropriate. And instead, he just comes out with what he thinks is is appropriate. And uh, I mean, it remind me of uh, of some of the Cone Brothers stuff that, you know, just yeah. died all of a sudden in an interaction that have no idea that it's off kilter or that the other person is horrified. So that was fun. And, and Shane, you know, really provided that in a big way. Yeah. Um... 
Yeah, I love that. I, I felt a little Coen brother uh, influence in this film as well, which I think anytime you do a crime dark comedy, there's going to be some Coen brother influence because they're just <laughs> they're just too too amazing and have such a big yeah. uh, place in the genre. Um, uh -huh. So, you know, you've done a lot of different uh, characters over the years. Is there any character in particular that you just look back on that you were like, this was just the most fun I think I've, I've like, ever had playing playing a role? You know, it's funny. It's uh, uh, if I really said that, I'd, I'd probably go back to a play I did back in 1990 or 92. <laughs> I can't remember what it was. Uh, uh, and I, I got to play the sort of a Louis the 16th kind of guy on stage who was just elaborate and had, uh, furls and a big wig and a live cockatoo on my arm. And because I, my first love really is stage and I'm doing a play right now, as a matter of fact, in New York at the Lincoln Center, I'm doing a play called Corruption by J.T. Rogers. And it is a brilliant play all about the phone hacking scandal that uh, uh, Rupert Murdoch's papers uh, had in the uh, 2010 area. And uh, I, I absolutely love getting back on the stage with a group of people and really working with them. Uh, but of course, getting to go down with a group of guys like this and, and do, a, do a film is also fantastic. If it's right. a good script, if it's a good cast, if it's a good director, you know, you're set. Yeah. Well, live cockatoo on your arm. It's hard to beat that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. I asked Shane if maybe in this film, but he said no. No, uh, maybe in the backstory. You know, maybe yeah. that's like one of his things. Don't you know? think the Cohn brothers would have gone for that? Live cockatoo. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> With no explanation as to right. anything about it. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Um, so you're a big theater fan of theater. Um, so is that where you see yourself really moving in the future is doing more theater as well or do you try to balance movies and theater do you also do tv as well yeah i i try to balance it i would say because um you know theater doesn't pay uh, very well and often uh, film and tv pays better especially i guess tv um so you do have to pay the bills so that's an important thing but i love doing theater and and uh i uh i i just feel good to be in a room and collaborate with people. And you do get to do that on a film, on a, on a, on a television show. So I like both, all three. So what else are you working on right now? What else do you have coming out? Um, I've, I've got a couple of things kind of in the works that I can't talk about yet, but uh, there's a TV <laughs> thing that's in the offing and I'll see if that happens. And uh, I've got a couple of films in the can. Uh, Dream Scenario is still out there. Which is great. Scenario, yeah. Which I, I just thought was ha, so much fun and fantastic. Yeah. And working with Nicolas Cage was a total gas. <laughs> um, and uh, I also uh, doing another thing that I like a lot. I'm going to be up at Albany at the University of Albany doing one night of a selected short, which is just a story. And a group of people come in and they see your story. And it, it, it is so much fun to do, I have to say. Uh, I do that later in the month, but uh, it's really, uh, you know, a lot of different stuff going on. So it's good. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's all really fascinating. You also do audiobooks, right? You also. I do. Narrate. I do. Yeah. I, I, uh, uh, I enjoy telling stories. Uh, I think it's what first really drew me to the profession is the, the possibility of telling a good story. And uh, uh that was what I really enjoyed about being a director because all of a sudden you're in charge of a film and you really right. are telling every part of the story. And I loved that. Um, I also had to produce, which I was not in love with. That's really hard. So I really appreciate producers and what they do <laughs> and what they accomplish because it's an awful job. <laughs> Um, is, you know, with my final question, is there any um, genre or collaborators or anybody that you would love to work with in the future or something that you'd love to do that you haven't, ex you know, explored? Well, you know, we talked about the Cone brothers and <laughs> I just, I love their work and I've, I've auditioned a couple of times. I was perfect and I, I can't believe I didn't get that. And then I go see the movie and go, oh, well, yeah, that guy's perfect, you know, so. <laughs> I'd love to be perfect for something they're doing and because uh, I, I, I love their films. They're fantastic. 
Well, let's make a call out for the Cohen's to <laughs> hopefully bring Do you that, in on something please. in the That'd be good. <laughs> um, I also love uh, Trick or Treat. That's one of you know, uh, <laughs> that's a yeah. cult favorite. There's, there's been talk every now and then about another go at, uh, at Trick or Treat, like a part two or, you know, a go, you know, a sequence or a prequel, you know, kind of thing. And I think that would be really fun, but I uh, yeah. uh, haven't heard it for sure. Well, also crossing my fingers for that one. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. Congrats on the movie. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, Christy. I appreciate that.